This episode is sponsored by GL Veneer. Visit GL Veneer to see their huge selection of wood veneers and live edge slabs. And Waterlocks. Waterlocks lets wood be beautiful. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the shop. I'm really happy with the way this project turned out. It may even be one of my favorite projects so far. If you want to build it, I'll have a link to the step-by-step -step plans in the description below. Let's get to work. I'm building the table with Baltic birch plywood, and I'll get started by cutting the parts to size. With the parts of the table cut to size, I'll pre-drill and countersink holes for the screws. I want the sides of the table and the top of the table to be a little bit heavier than three quarters, just so the table looks a little bit more substantial. And I'll do that by padding out the sides and the bottom of the top with 3 8 plywood. Now that I have the two end pieces in, I'll use a piece of the scrap 3 8 plywood, hold it up tight against each side, and trace a line. Next I'll pre-drill holes for screws so I can attach the dividers from the top. Now I'll flip the table onto its face and countersink the holes that I just drilled from the top. I want to let everyone know that I'm having a 48 hour pre-sale on the plans for this project and next week I'll be posting the full 40 minute plus tutorial with no music, just all the detailed information that will help you build this table. So I hope that you'll click on the link in the description below and take advantage of the pre-sale price. And as always, thanks so much for your support. Now I can drop the bottom into place and attach it with inch and three quarter screws, screwing through the sides and the bottom of the table. Now that I have the table put together, the next step is to beef up this leg a little bit. I'm using a piece of 3 8 plywood. I'll stand it up against the inside of the leg, use a sharp pencil, and trace a line. And now I'll make that cut with the cross cut sled on the table saw. Now that I have the table assembled, the next step is to band the edge to hide the edge of the plywood, and I'll use the table saw to make the edge banding. When I attach the edge banding to the table, I'll start on one side and then work my way around. And the first thing I like to do is put a miter cut on the one end that's facing the top. I'll use a piece of scrap wood to make sure the molding is in the correct position and then clamp it in place. Using a very sharp pencil, I'll make the mark for the next cut. Thank you. 
With the first piece of molding cut, I'll attach it with one inch nails in the pin nailer. The nails do a good job of holding the molding in position and the clamps create a strong glue joint. Now that I've got this first piece of molding attached, that's what I'm working off of. I've cut a miter for the piece at the top here and I'll double check the fit. That's the one thing you want to make sure that your, your 45s are right on the money. And now I can go ahead and clamp this piece in place and mark the other end for the next cut. Now that the main construction of the table is finished and the edge banding is attached, I'll move on to the drawers and I'll get started by rough cutting the drawer fronts and the drawer backs to size. Okay, well now I've got my drawer fronts and my drawer backs cut to size and this is a little complicated because I want continuous wood grain not only through the drawer fronts but also through the drawer backs because the backs are also the back of the cabinet. So take your time, label your parts and make sure that your grain is going in the right direction and you don't accidentally flip your boards. So now that I've got these parts cut to size I'll go ahead and cut rabbits in the drawer fronts and the drawer backs as the first step of making the drawers. Now that I have the rabbits cut in the drawer fronts, I'll take a measurement and cut the drawer sides to length. Back at the table saw, I'll cut a groove at the bottom of the drawer to accept the drawer bottom. Next I'll cut the drawer bottoms to size. With all the parts cut to size, I'll assemble the drawer by screwing it together with inch and 5 8 trim screws. The best filler to use when working with veneer is Auto Body Bondo. You'll need to mix the hardener with the resin. This stuff smells pretty strong and dries pretty fast, so wear a mask and be prepared to mix up a few batches. I'll fill the screw holes and any imperfections I can find in the plywood, including the end grain. Wood veneer is very thin and imperfections will telegraph through, so it's very important to have a smooth surface. With the drawers fit in the table, I'll give it one more sanding before applying the veneer. The veneer I chose for this project is Figured Clara Walnut from GL Veneer. I'll have a link to the sheet down below. After carefully sanding the table one last time with 220 sandpaper, the next step is finish. 
For this project, I'm using water locks. I'll apply four coats to the base and drawer fronts and six coats to the top for a little added protection. Water locks has been my go-to finish for fine furniture for more than 30 years. To learn more about water locks, click on the link in the description. I've allowed the finish to cure for a few days and now I can attach the drawer poles. I made a quick jig with a piece of eighth inch masonite to make sure I drill the holes in the correct position. I also used a drill press to drill a hole in this block of wood and this should help me drill holes that are perfectly straight. Okay, well, I'm really happy with the way this project turned out and happy to have it finished. It's up here now in the art studio getting photographed before I deliver it this week. And don't forget, you can get the discount on the plans for the next 48 hours. So if you want to build that, definitely click on the link and check that out. And uh, yeah, just real happy with it. Very modern look. I love the continuous grain in the drawer fronts and it's also in the drawer back and all that is explained in the long format tutorial video that I'll be posting next week. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.